All right, we have ourselves our color changing beacon. We can Hey guys, welcome back to iCraft MC. In today's episode, we're going to be making ourselves our first beacon, but not just any beacon, a rainbow color changing beacon. But before we get to that, we're going to make today's banner of the day. Today's banner starts with a white banner with black dye. The black dye will be in the black rondel shape. Next, we're going to go on to a blue perfess inverted, which is this shape right here. Then, we're going to go on to a black pale sinister, which is this shape right here. Then, we're going to go on to a black pale dexter, which is this shape right here. Then, we're going to go on to a black chief, which is this shape right here. And we're going to end off last but not least with a black base gradient, which is this shape right here. And you can see what it is. It's a Herobrine banner. Oh, that was pretty cool. Herobrine is, of course, the Minecraft um, legend of a kind of haunted Steve player with glowing eyes. So I think it would be kind of a cool banner to have. So there's Herobrine, and you can use that to make your worlds more spooky or to possibly just uh, make something more interesting. Anyway, before we actually craft the beacon, something we're going to want to do is fill this little area in here with this. This is going to be where the beacon beam comes out, since the beacon itself will actually be underground. Now we're going to go back to our room here, and we're going to make ourselves the beacon, which is right up in here. So I believe we have our nether star. There we go. And I think I'll definitely not use the crafting guide for this, just to actually put every block in here myself. And there's the beacon and achievement as soon as I'm off of here. Let's see if we get it. Beacon? Oh, maybe we have to place it, I bet. Anyway, we have the rest of the supplies we need in this shulker box. And we're going to travel down into my strip mine because from there is a tunnel leading to where we're going to be building this amazing beacon. Which will include things such as a chest to hold uh, gold ingots to get more um, uh, effects on there. And also the mechanisms to change the colors, which should be very, very cool. So it's right down here. Uh, taking a right, I believe. That was, a, no, that was a left. Anyway, going this way. And this way. And I mined out this area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of these torches, because we don't really need them right here. And we're going to start building this thing. So let's put the chest up here. And we'll get out of the supplies we need. I guess we'll just get out all the supplies, really. Uh, we won't need quite all this. I uh, will just actually need one of each of these colors of class. And uh, not all these repeaters, just eight repeaters. And probably not all that dust either. So what we're going to do is we're going to count out this beacon. The middle is, of course, here. And we want this to be nine by nine on the bottom. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It looks like I have got the right size base on here, which is very, very good. Now, of course, I got all this gold from my gold firm, but I haven't really used the gold from that gold firm very much yet. And so now we can definitely use that since, of course, a beacon takes uh, somewhere between two to three stacks of gold blocks. I think it's uh, two stacks and 40 or something. I guess we'll find out once we're done uh, building all this. So we'll just put all these down like this. And we're basically making the beacon base so this will have the full power that it can to give us, let's say, haste 2 or speed. And the place of this beacon should be enough to cover my entire house as well as some of my mine. And I suppose I can always move the beacon if I absolutely need to, or I can possibly get a second one eventually. So we'll keep going up like this. And of course, the base bit there is always the most amount of gold. So we should be almost done here. But uh, yeah, we'll fill all this in. It looks like we have one more layer here. Uh, that does look like it so we'll put this in like this and put this in here and that should power up perfect because we have to have this up there and now what we're going to do is kind of a funny ui anyway we're going to put in one gold ingot and we may as well go with uh, we could go speed two maybe or let's go with haste two maybe i don't really like how the fov changes with speed so there's that and then we can mine really quick we'll do a little test uh Oh, I think it needs to be efficiency 5 to insta mine, so that's not very useful, but either way, if we want to change that, what we can do is we actually can put a chest here, like this, and put in all these gold ingots here, so we can change the effect uh, whenever we want, which is pretty cool. So, maybe I'll change that to strength, to I think would be quite useful. There we go. Alright, so now what we're going to do to make the actual color changing part, which is of course the most interesting part of this, is we're going to get out uh, one of each type of glass. Now what I tend to do, and it doesn't really matter, what I tend to do is go with 
uh, red, yellow, green, blue. Now these of course are going to move. We're just going to throw them in there for now because that's how it works. And it's funny how to see each color apply like that and kind of make that gray at the top, which is very interesting. Anyway, we have these sticky pistons, uh, polished uh, diorite, doesn't actually really matter what it is, just some slabs and some blocks and some repeaters and just all these different things right here. So we're going to basically get the place where the pistons go. So we're going to build out uh, three out like this on every single side, kind of going from here. I suppose we should probably go uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, but it doesn't, again, really matter too much. We're basically just making areas to put the pistons on, which will eventually also have the redstone as well. So I'm going to put out these like this. And these are going to be so that when the piston is extended, the glass block will be where it is currently, which should be uh, exactly how we want it. So let's see the one, two, three. Uh, oh, I see. It looks like I put two on here. That's kind of funny. So I'll just go up like this and change that all around. Should be more like uh, up like this and change this just a little bit. And then we have here our perfect setup here. These are, again, just kind of temporary blocks to get those pistons in correctly because, of course, pistons can be a bit finicky to place. All right, so this is in like this, and we'll start with this one. We're going to break these two blocks here and put a piston in like that. We're going to break these two blocks here and put a piston in like this. And break these two blocks here and put a piston in like this. And I can probably reach this one. If not, then we'll just have to go up a little bit higher, see if we can get the right angle so that the place is right. Yes, we did. That's very good. Uh, it might actually be bedtime. Let me just see. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. There we go. We don't need any more of this glass. So what we want to do now is get ourselves out these slabs and we're just gonna make ourselves the actual area where this goes so what we're gonna want to do is get ourselves these slabs going over like this again these don't really even have to be slabs it just i don't know, i think a thinner design always looks better so we can go like this and like that in fact we may as well just do all this with the uh polished dye right? i don't think there's any point of using the slabs so we'll go around like this let's just go up one like this over like this and this will go up one like this uh, it'll go up actually on the edge, so this will be going into a block, so that, yeah, this little edge goes up like this and doesn't go up over here. So this will go all the way over like this, and then this will go up like this. Now this side, a little bit different, we want to get back down to there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and get ourselves a nice area here, and then we're going to go up like this, like this, and that'll work. So what I want to do now get ourselves our repeaters, put two repeaters here at full delay. We want to get ourselves two repeaters here at full delay, like this, two repeaters here at full delay, and two repeaters here at full delay. Oh, that's kind of funny how those placed. All right, and some redstone dust around here like this. And this is basically just making a very, very simple clock circuit, not a big deal. And what we're gonna to do to start by kind of calibrating the whole thing is we're going to put in a torch like this, let every single one of those elongate like that, then break this and break this to let it all detract. All right. Perfect. So now these are all connected up like that. What we want to do now is basically fool around with the timing just a little bit so we basically get to the point of where this thing is at the correct timing and we have this changing so it's eight different colors. So it basically goes red, then mix of red and yellow, then red goes away, well, that's pure yellow, then yellow, bit of green in the yellow, then pure green, then blue, bit of green with the yellow, pure blue, then red with the blue, and then pure red and on the circle again. So we're basically getting eight distinct colors at hopefully around the exact same times of each other. Now this can take a little bit of time, but it's not too hard to do since you can look at it and just change it around that way. So just at any point here with a redstone dust, near it just put a redstone torch until you see one, and then once the other one goes in, we can see we've already gotten it already. Uh, no, it looks like we have not. Let's see. Uh, okay, that is not correct. Let's see. Actually, maybe it is correct. Let's see. So we have red, orange, yellow, green. Ah, uh, no, that does look like it's correct, actually. That's perfect. So we'll just break this here. Uh, what we can also do is just keep a handy torch just on the wall like this, in case we ever need that. Something like this. That shouldn't affect it, does it? No, it doesn't. So that's it. That's actually pretty simple. That's how you make the rainbow color changing beacon. And we'll come up to the top here and see about how that looks, which is going to be the really cool part. Because we'll put our extra supplies away in here. And of course, we can always go down here and change the color of that. So that's actually pretty simple. It makes a really, really pretty beacon. And just pretty cool overall. So uh, I guess we'll go over there and check that out. And what's cool too is that even though the color is changing, the beacon effect is not changing, which means that basically we have a situation where that beacon uh, effect is going to stay there for forever, I guess, until we want to change it. So it's really working very, very well. So I'll go up here and see what that looks like.
and we'll also see how far the beacon effect extends. It looks like it's actually bedtime. It's funny because I was trying to go bed down there, but apparently it's bedtime now. So we will take a bit of a snooze. And there we go. All right, and we'll take a look out here and see what we have. All right, we have ourselves our color changing beacon. We can't fall down here, although it is pretty deep. But I might actually. Oh no! Oh my goodness. That was so close, although that was very uh, uh, nerve wracking there. My goodness, that was close. That would have destroyed those banners. And banners, uh, as you know, are rather irreplaceable because they take so hard and long to make. That was very, very close. What we're going to do here here's a trick. If you fly up straight in the air, you'll actually spawn proof by. Well, not spawn proof, but you'll make the mobs despawn because basically you're going so high up that they're forced to despawn because mobs can only exist if they're hostile 120 blocks away from you. I mean, no, that was so close. Good thing I ran just in time. That's good. So anyway, what I was trying to do before I was frightened by those obnoxious creepers, who knows, who knows maybe it's the hero Brian banner putting the creeper curse on me, but uh, realistically here, um, I want to put some glass down here because then if this breaks, I don't fall all the way down to death. So we're just going to get as far down as we can here. Uh, a nice bit of glass there, put up like this, and that'll just make it so that if we break this, then we don't fall down to our death. So that's perfect. And I always think we could do for the little last bit of this episode is basically take a look at our finished house from uh, two episodes ago because basically I've done so much work on here. I just want you guys to take a look at all of it. It's really, really cool. We have these cool beams in here. We have these uh, potted plants. We have these kind of inset walls here. We have all kinds of cool stuff in here like um, these carpets are actually hidden lighting. And we have these cool buttons here on the walls. We have these cool potted plants which are quite interesting. We still have the uh, the guest bedroom here by Gemma Locus. Um, we actually have, watch this, I've never shown this on camera before. There's actually a secret tunnel right through here. Aha, secret tunnel, pretty cool. We have our cool wardrobe. And of course we have our curtains, which I think are very, very cool. Actually, something we could do right now is we could get curtains on the rest of my windows because I don't have those. So I think I'll just get my shears and do that. So uh, yeah, I'll get those over here. And if you're still watching this point of the video, comment down and say so. I think it'd be pretty cool if someone was watching this far into a video. I'm sure there's a couple people that have. So yeah, make sure to like the video and comment down that you got this far. And I'll go over this way and get ourselves those. And of course, what's cool about the banners is we can just copy them over. So once we have one uh, curtain banner, all we need is as much white wool as possible. So we'll go over here and get all this. Oh, it looks like I fell. It's actually crazy because there's over 64 white sheep here, although it does not look like it. Because I actually came in here with 64 uh, white dye a little while ago. And I wasn't able to dye every single one white, so we'll just go through here and get all these. These should make some luxurious curtains for our house. Of course, homegrown wool, or at least as homegrown as it can be. And we'll get all these sheared up here. Of course, these sheep are rather loud, but uh, that's fine. We'll just get all these and we can copy that banner over get those cool curtains but the curtains do take a lot of wool blocks so of course definitely a large sheet pen like this is quite necessary so we'll go around here like this and let's see shear this up and shear this and shear this and shear this it's sheer genius but uh, anyway we'll go through here so we have our uh, have a not maybe enough wool but we have a good amount of wool so we'll go over here and make those all into banners which just means we need some sticks and we have a stick chest right over here, which is good. So we'll go over here and grab those and make a bunch of curtain banners. I'm going to actually have some extra curtain banners in here already. I do, but I'll definitely want more than that. So we'll just make a whole bunch of banners and just maybe copy them all over because why not? Uh, I think I could definitely use as many curtains since my room, ha my house has a lot of windows in it. And of course, these curtains are used a lot. So let's see if the kitchen could use a curtain. I'm not sure. No, I think that's pretty good. I don't think the kitchen would really have curtains, realistically. Uh, this could have curtains. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I think I want to keep that one open. Let's come over here and see what we can do over here with this. Uh, this could definitely use curtains. The thing about an office is that oftentimes offices are dimly lit, and I think curtains uh, would, of course, contribute to that. So we'll go through like this and i think i have some upstairs rooms did i actually not replace that there no i didn't let me just quickly put that uh stair there actually because we don't want that to be missing let's see what we have here stairs 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 uh here we go perfect so we'll grab that and throw that down and we got a song coming up oh that's always nice uh, i sure love the okay just got locked in. anyway i sure love the songs in minecraft and um nice to hear them so here we go put this one in here and get ourselves these curtains up here. 
Uh, so we have them all in the master bedroom. I mean, I guess I could put some on that window, but it doesn't really fit it. Uh, so that's fine here. Let's see if we have all the curtains in here we want. Uh, looks like it. I think the other side of the house, though, definitely needs some curtains. So we'll go over here, get it here in the library. I'm sure libraries would have curtains since I think too much light can ruin books. And especially these big windows here could definitely let in a lot of possibly unwanted light. We could even get curtains on this one too, which I think, again, just really adds something to it. I think it's it's funny how much just something like adding a couple banners can really make that uh, make the house look a lot more homey, right? So we'll go over here, and it looks like there's a lot of windows in here, but we'll just put some of these up on some of the windows like this. So we could probably just do this window uh, up like this, and that's good. So we only have one curtain banner left. And yeah, there we go. We have all the curtains in our house, and we have our super cool rainbow banner. And I think we'll go back down there and take one look, a uh, last look at that. So yeah, there is our rainbow color changing banner. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to press the like button. Make sure to subscribe to see more content like this, and make sure to press the notification bell to be notified of when I upload new videos. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.